Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Tonight we are going to be talking about a brand new battery from Rigid, and I want to see where it stacks up in their existing battery lineup, so let's go ahead and get right into that on Tinker with Tools. Rigid's tool announcements may not always garner the same type of attention across the tool landscape as what other larger companies do, but this one in particular has me excited because of what it means for both the tools that you already have in your lineup and also for the future of Rigid. See, there are some unique things about this battery that are going to be first for Rigid, but also are going to lay a good foundation moving forward. Now, I'm not an expert in this field by any means, but I do have a general understanding of it, and that's kind of where we're going to keep it. I'm sure at one point or another, I might have a misstep on the exact terminology of something, so bear with me, but just try and see the general picture of what we're trying to lay down so that we can kind of talk about what makes this battery unique. Before we really dive into what's new about this battery, I do want to go through a couple of different basics in terms of batteries and how they deliver power to the tools. Now in the very basic sense, you have your electrical equation, which is going to be voltage times amps equals watts. In this case, the voltage is going to be the amount of pressure forcing the electricity out of the battery into the tool, whereas amps is going to be the amount of electricity that's capable of delivering when you multiply the two together, that's where you get watts, and that's going to be talking about the amount of potential energy it can draw. Now this is an 18 volt battery, and while it is going to be able to output 18 volts nominal energy, it is not made up of a single 18 volt cell type inside. Instead, it is made up of individual cells that are going to be wired together in series to provide the combined voltage of 18 volts. In this case, you're gonna be talking about 3.6 volt individual cells that are going to be wired together in a series of five to provide 18 volts nominal to the tool. So then with voltage out of the way, we wanna talk about the capacity of the battery, and that's where we're gonna be talking about it in either milliamp hours or amp hours. And that is just going to be on individual cells, you're typically gonna see a milliamp hour rating, in this case, 2600 on this individual cell, but over on a bigger battery, you'll typically see it on an amp hour rating. Now, when you wire a battery together in series, it doesn't increase the capacity. That's where you either have to go with higher capacity individual cells, or you can actually wire battery cells together in parallel, increasing the capacity of the battery. That's what we're seeing in this four amp hour battery from Rigid. Now, the last key component we wanna talk about batteries is going to be the individual cell types. And previously, we've talked about two common sizes, if you will, of battery types being 18650, or the ones that are seemingly gonna be in more high performance batteries, which are gonna be 21700. But fundamentally, both of these sizes of cells are going to operate the same in, in that they're going to have discrete tabs that are wired to the internal structure of the battery and it's going to be the single connection point out to the terminal on the battery and so there's going to be limitations on how much energy can flow in or out of the battery and there's going to be inefficiencies if you will in terms of how these cells operate. Now that we've covered the basics of kind of traditional battery architecture, what makes this one different? Well, inside the new EXP battery, we are gonna be using tabless cells inside of there. Instead of having individual discrete tabs that are going to connect both ends of the battery to the terminals, you're instead seeing is that the entire internal material of the battery is going to be connected to the terminal along its whole surface area. Now, this type of architecture leads to more uniform current flow, reduced bottlenecks and how it can deliver that energy and just overall greater efficiency. Now the result is going to be better thermal management, especially under demanding situations like fast charging or just being used on a higher output tool. Now all of these factors also combine to potentially increase the overall battery life of the battery. So even though you might be paying more upfront for a battery of this type, you hopefully are going to be able to use it longer than what you would a traditional battery type because of some of those approved efficiencies. Now let's talk about Rigid's battery lineup individually and kind of talk about the different types of batteries they have. Now there are basically three current types of batteries in Rigid's lineup. The first one is just going to be the bog standard lithium ion battery. And this one is going to come in three different sizes being a 1.5 amp hour, a two amp hour and a four amp hour. Next up is going to be their max output batteries. 
and their max output batteries are currently sold in 2 amp hour, 4 amp hour, and 6 amp hour variants. Although the max output battery does have a different internal cell than the standard one when I tore them apart, the biggest difference is going to be the addition of some additional terminals or connection points for the battery that allow the tool to communicate with the battery and let it know that it can receive more power and so then the battery is able to deliver it. So the big difference between these is going to be communication between the tools. Now lastly, in the current battery lineup, we are gonna be talking about their EXP batteries. And in their EXP lineup, there are gonna be three different size batteries. First going to be the four amp hour that we're talking about is the new battery tonight but then there also is an eight amp hour EXP and a 12 hour EXP. Now only the four amp hour EXP is the only one that's going to have tabless cells, but you are gonna be seeing 21700 cells in both the eight amp hour and the four amp hour. So you also do see some more premium performance from those batteries as well, especially on higher demand tools. Now the one missing battery type that we are not going to be showing tonight is going to be a prior version of rigid batteries known as octane batteries and these were released starting in about 2018. I never owned them and so we're not going to be featuring them tonight but if you have them use them because I hear there's some great batteries. Now as I mentioned one of the big benefits to a tabless cell battery is going to be the charging characteristics. When you pair the 4 amp hour EXP battery with their 6 amp charger which is going to be their more rapid charger you are going to see some pretty impressive results and they're actually touting that you can get 80% of the battery charged in just 15 minutes. Now once again as we talked about with the better thermal management that is one place where definitely these tabless cell batteries really shine is they're just able to put energy in faster and also take it out and how they provide it to the tools. All right, so now we're gonna get on to the testing. We are both going to be running the newest rigid four mode impact driver, which is their most powerful impact driver. And then we're also going to be putting to work the rigid high torque hammer drill, which is also going to be their most potent drill at the current moment.
All right, so now let's talk about the performance testing, and I'm not gonna go over every number here. You can pause the video on those results and kind of see the individual performance, but let's talk general themes. First off, the standard batteries do work on the tool, but you're far from getting the peak performance out of either of these tools that I tested tonight. Even when you move up to that two amp hour max output battery, you start to see a performance benefit on the tool by using those batteries. And then obviously as you move up to bigger, more premium batteries, bigger capacity batteries, they have more cells to distribute that load over. And so you see a benefit from that as well. In early testing, before I turned the camera on, I actually did a test on a slightly smaller, less demanding fastener, and I actually saw very little performance difference between that of the max output and the max output EXP batteries. But as we moved up into the slightly more demanding task that I was doing tonight, you do see some definite separation between the standard, then up to the max output, and to the max output EXP batteries. In the impact driver testing, we saw that the four amp hour actually bested the eight amp hour. And that's kind of what Rigid has been claiming in their marketing material is that this is going to be one of their more performant batteries. Now, when we got to the drill testing, that's where we started to see the eight amp hour kind of hold its dominance, especially in more demanding tasks. Now, while we did see the eight amp hour best the four amp hour just a little bit in the drilling task. Overall, when I combine all the testing together, that battery was only 3% behind on performance to that of the much larger and more expensive 8 amp hour battery. So unless you just need tons of runtime, I think you can actually save weight by going with a smaller battery at a lower cost point, allowing you to have more of those batteries as well. Now when this all boils down, does this mean you need to go out and get rid of your standard batteries or you need to switch to all max output EXP batteries? No, I'm not saying that by any means. Each one of these batteries has their place and there are certainly tools where you're just not going to see the benefit of an EXP battery. Something like a fan or a light in my opinion just receives little to no benefit from going with a more performant battery. And so you can go ahead and run those more traditional batteries there. And for a lot of tasks running on a standard two amp hour battery, the tool is still going to work. But as you start to push up into more demanding tasks, that's where I would recommend seeing if you can get your hands on some more performant batteries, whether it be just even the standard max output batteries or going to these EXP batteries, you're gonna see benefits to your tool. So then in summary, I think this newest battery release is a good thing in terms of how it performs compared to these other batteries. And if that's all you take away from this video, then that's good information to have. The other piece of it though that I'd like to talk about is just how much good things Rigid has been doing lately in terms of their overall lineup whether it's the high torque hammer drill, the track saw release, and a couple of their other advancements, we're starting to see a trend of some pretty positive news from them overall as a, as a lineup. And if you need top tier power and performance, you may choose to go with another brand, but you can still get really nice power and performance on a brand like Rigid, and you can get that lifetime service agreement that gives you some long-term peace of mind in buying your tools. We really do live in a golden age of tools where there are a lot of different lineups that you can go to and get some really competent tools that are gonna provide you with a lot of benefit and value as a user. What I love is it's down to you to individually choose which platform you want to be on or what combination of platforms you wanna be on. But we really have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to what we can choose from right now. So there you have it. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments down below. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and make sure to turn on notifications so you get notified when I put out new content. As always, thank you for all the support. And until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.